Grab your favorite cup. We're about to pour you a glass of the most wholesome drink. Our goal is to amplify marginalized voices through subjects that matter. We will do this by discussing subjects that are uplifting, gainful, and truthful, no matter how uncomfortable they may be, in hope of gaining clarity and invoking progressive change. Of course, we'll sprinkle on some off-color topics to make our discussions more palpable. Welcome, Welcome to Urban, Urban Proper. Proper. Welcome to episode five. Oh my goodness, can you believe we've officially been doing this for a month? Yeah, you guys in love with this shit. Wow. Uh, I mean, of course you are. We know you are. It is me, the, the cuddler, Shisha, self-proclaimed queen of everything. And it is I, Darius, the destroyer, self-proclaimed destroyer of things. Booty hose. Oh, <laughs> we wreck them endlessly. Well, we are recording on Juneteenth. It is June nineteenth, two thousand nineteen. Happy, Happy Juneteenth, y'all! And if you don't know what Juneteenth is, that is okay. We didn't learn until a couple of years ago. Um, Juneteenth is the African American Independence Day. Yeah. So the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in eighteen sixty. <laughs> 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 and it was not until 1865 that the um, last slaves in Galveston, Texas, were notified that they were now free United States citizens. Ew. So we love uh, a free slave. Yeah, apparently somehow this missed the, the history books in school. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so going forward, I I think us in the black community need to start celebrating this more. We need to. This is our 4th of July. This should be our fireworks. It should be... Yeah, it should be a celebration. It yeah. really should. It really should be like a whole moment and a movement. And yeah. I, At first, I was really angry for people who didn't know. I was really angry with the school system for not teaching us this. But, um, you know, you just... The best things you learn outside of school. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just going forward with future generations, we just have to make sure that they're aware of this and they're educated yes, on our history and put that knowledge into our our youth yes even though technically we're youth we're youthful yeah yeah we're not old hags yet i am yeah i feel like it hagatha darling if i were a drag queen my name would be hagatha monet oh janet oh janet <laughs> just kidding that wouldn't be my drag name it'd be pantsless thunder goose I don't know how to deal with you today. Uh, not I don't a, how not to even deal with a little me bit. Every day. Not even a little bit. So episode five, we are calling the detox tea. Detox tea. And what are we detoxing from? We're detoxing from toxic ass toxic ass relationships. Three that minutes. is that is family members. That is romantic relationships. Yeah. That is platonic relationships we gotta detox from all that shit we just have to cleanse our spiritual being we have to cleanse our soul we have to get that shit up and out yes we have to cleanse our energy we have to align our chakras you have to sage your phone listen sage your pussy listen sage your booty hole you gotta get all that shit out because it's just it's too much. It's too much toxic energy up in the earth right now. And I feel like it just becomes this ongoing cycle that just keeps going around mm-hmm. and around. And it becomes learned behavior. It does. And that really fucks with you when you get into a relationship with some relationship, whether it be a family or platonic or mm-hmm. romantic or what have you. Yes. When you meet somebody that is not toxic, you'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah, and we have to unpack a lot of that. We have to unlearn a lot of things that we learn growing up um, so that we can be a better generation. I think one of my favorite terms that I have learned in my mental health journey and like discussing and talking about things Mm -hmm. is unpack. Oh, I love that shit. Because like that's literally what you are literally unpacking so much trauma and damage and, Mm -hmm. and toxicity that you didn't even know was there. And then you you have to go a step further. You have to unpack it, and you got to shoot that shit or burn that shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just got to get rid of. It. You can't put it back in. You can't let it let it make its way back into your luggage. We got to keep that luggage nice and organized. Nice, neat, organized, presentable. Um, don't let nobody steal your joy. You can't see my hand gestures right now, y'all. She doing a lot of beautiful movements. Yeah. 
So, okay, so where should we begin with unpacking toxic behavior and detoxing from these relationships? Well, first let's talk about let's talk about family. Mm, I would just like to like place a blanket statement over this whole section talking about family. It is okay to cut your family off if they are not good for you. Mm. Thank you. I feel like a lot of people, they really live by that blood is thicker than water bullshit. Mm. And a lot of the times, your family be the ones. Like, it, I... In my own family. It be your own <laughs> niggas! <laughs> <laughs> it be your own niggas for real, it y'all. really... Really do, like, legitimately do. Yes. Like, your flesh and blood will fuck you over. Yes. Way I, harder, way faster... And they, it's like they, they, they take advantage of your trust and your love. And they think mm-hmm. because you family that you're not going to, quote, turn your back on them. But sometimes you just got to turn your back on you these You got to tur- turn your back, cut, cut the cord, burn cut the cord, uh, blow the cord up, blow the bridge up, goddamn. I saw a meme that was like, I like to set bridges on fire while I'm standing on them so people know I'm crazy. And uh-huh. that speaks to me. I don't know if I could. That speaks to me. Like, uh-huh. I, like. My current work situation, I'm about to set that bridge on fucking fire while I'm standing on it. I feel you on that because I'm at that I'm at that point, especially the day that I had today mm, on Juneteenth. On Juneteenth, we bathed in white the, tears on the, Juneteenth. Yes, the white devil would try to come for me today, but that's not what we're talking about right we're now. We're talking about family relationships. Carry yes. on with what you were saying, she. So it is okay, um, like Darius was saying, to cut off the ties and. People that are not good for you, regardless of what their position in your life, if they're not bringing you any joy, if they are um, hurting your mental health, they need to go. Whether it's your mom, your brother, your sister, your cousin. I've cut off a couple of family members. I have too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, they're not worth the mental strain. And... What really frustrates me about toxic family is when your family member knows they're toxic Mm -hmm. and they know they aren't doing anything to better themselves or you or try to make a healthy, uh, loving relationship. Mm -hmm. And they just keep doing the shit that they're doing. And that is any action from... um, Envious behavior, mm-hmm. um, sabotage, trying to sabotage the relationships that you're in, mm-hmm. whether it's a romantic relationship, platonic relationship, um, what have you. Um, also, receiving and never reciprocating, mm-hmm. feeling like they're entitled to anything that you own. Just because we blood, don't mean it's yours. Exactly. Okay. Just because I done made some money. Don't mean that I am obligated to give you a dime of any money that I give. Just because I own a business and I produce a product Mm -hmm. or I provide a service doesn't mean that you get that service for a discounted and or free price. Yes. And you should be unapologetic with cutting these people off. You shouldn't... What's another thing we're going to kind of touch on and we're going to go back to it? You need to flex your nose. Yes. I love that phrase. That's in a... Flexing your nose. I had a friend that is a yes person. Mm. Like, can you do this? Yes. Can you do that? Yes. Can you do this? Yes. Can you do that? Yes. And then they would come to me and kind of complain about these people always coming to them and asking them to do this stuff. And I'm like, well, bitch, why are you not flexing your nose? Why are you not telling these people no? It's the most simplest. If you don't want to do it or you can't actually do it. Don't do it. You don't feel like doing it. Say no. And then leave it at that. No explanation needed. No is an explanation. That is correct. 100%. It's a full on sentence. If somebody asks you to do some shit or something, you like anything. And the answer is no. The answer is no. Mm-mm. It's okay. not no. And then like, but why? It, it don't matter. Fucking no. no. I'm not doing it at all. I said no. And that's your answer. Ugh. But I want to um, refer to an article on Two Nicole that I um, read while I was in the Black Women Healing Group on Facebook. It is actually talking about, and I'm, we're going to post this on our Facebook page, mm-hmm. um, talking about toxic relationships um, in your family. And 
there's one thing that stood out to me that is very prevalent in the black community and that is what happens in my house stays in my house mm. and that can be very problematic it can uh, a lot of situations um with you know talking to people um just having conversations you know venting um people have run into because of that phrase what happens in my house stays in my house a lot of people have been molested or abused and because of this term we're scared to you know seek help outside of the home whether it be you know telling a a teacher or you know even speaking to your parent about it Mm -hmm. um i remember (laughs) this one video that was it, it went viral it was this girl she set up a video um her camera to talk to her mom her mom had a boyfriend and she said hey mom your boyfriend came in my room again mm. and i'm telling you this this story boils my goddamn blood and she, her mom immediately gets defensive and is like well, well, well what did you do why, why was he in your room Ugh. You walking around here in them booty shorts, and what are you, you trying to seduce my man? Like this is your child. This is your why under you, age child. Why did you just make it a competition between your, like you said, underage child and you? That is that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. And you know, I've heard a, I've heard a lot of scenarios like that, particularly in the black community of women bringing a man into the house and having a teenage or slightly older daughter Mm -hmm. and the mother like accusing her daughter of being like trying to steal her man when it's like I'm a kid yeah and I think it's a psychological issue um I think I, I don't I don't understand it I don't get it either but I think it's instead of holding the man accountable, the adult in the situation mm-hmm. accountable, she the per, the the mother doesn't have enough backbone to do that. So she's lashing out at the mo the most vulnerable person in the situation, mm-hmm. and that is the victim. That is your child. And I feel like it's putting a lot more power on a kid. Than a child has, mm-hmm. like you said, the man in this situation is the the villain. Like mm-hmm. that, like if he's preying on your daughter, your daughter isn't doing anything to make him prey on no. her. Like that man is disgusting and toxic, and you need to get rid of him instead of trying to get rid of your daughter instead. And it was another article. I think we talked about this before, but basically talking about how the world views young black girls from age the adultification of black children. There you go. Yeah. Um, from age 5 to 18, um, they are seen as more s- sexualized, um, having adult um, behavior versus their counterparts, which we always compare black and white. Mm-hmm. They have less innocence. They have more attitude. And I think that kind of plays into the situation, that internal thing that people don't even realize that they're doing. Um, but kind of try to move it along um, a little bit we're still talking about toxic relationships. Um, the whole idea that staying in a relationship and tolerating toxic behavior and tolerating emotional, physical abuse makes you more worthy at the end result of the person that's dishing it out. We need to throw that the fuck out. The one I out. Take that shit and chuck it and then burn it and then bury it, dig it back up, cremate it, and then bury it again. Yes. Like... like I think one of my least favorite words is tolerate. Mm -hmm. And you should never tolerate anything. Either something is good for you and you like it, or it's bad for you and you don't like it. There is never a time where you should be like, well, I'm going to tolerate this just for it. Like, no. Like, you, if, it's, if, it's, if it's toxic, end it. Like, kill it with fire. And the thing about toxic, toxic, you think about toxicity. You think about poison. You mm-hmm. think about something that's going to decay you, break you down, and, and it's lethal. Mm-hmm. You got to get rid of it. Blood or not, you got to get rid of it. You got to run it out. It go. You got to let it go. Like, yes. it, there just is no, there should be no room in any part of your body, in your soul, and your spirit, and your energy for something that is going to poison you and ruin you. And there's nothing honorable 
in staying and tolerating an abusive situation. There is absolutely nothing that, and I, from the standpoint of someone who has observed, not observed abusive relationships, but has been told of abusive relationships Mm -hmm. from the victim's standpoint, it is a lot of fear and it is a lot of um, guilt Mm -hmm. that is being put on the victim. And that is even worse. Like, that makes... I understand why it makes it hard, but it also is, like... It's heart-wrenching. It is, because it's like, I want you to fight harder to remove this fear and this guilt from you. And all of that will happen if you remove this toxic person. But also, I get it. Like... But I want you... And then it's like, I want you to see your worth and know your worth mm -hmm. and be able to climb out of the situation. Mm Mm-hmm. But it, it's not always like that. It's not. And sometimes it, it just. Oh, I've seen. I've seen, not so many, but several friends who are like, "Well, yeah, this thing happened, and I didn't like it, but I guess you know I'll tolerate it." Or so and so X Y Z person didn't mean it this way. Or mm-hmm. and I'm like, give an excuse, give them benefit of oh. doubt, playing that the devil advocate, and you can't. Mm-hmm. You have to see it for what it is. And sometimes it's hard when they they glaze it over with that nice or they glaze it over with that quote love. Mm-hmm. But nah, sis, that ain't it. It ain't. That ain't it. And mm-hmm. I don't mean sis just to mean women. I mean sis to mean all people. Mm-hmm. It's gender neutral these days. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it's Pride Month. It's Juneteenth. It's gender neutral. Everything. Listen. Oh my goodness. Um, and you know, I think actually I was gonna say something about this earlier. A lot of I think a lot of that internalized um, adultification, both in Black people and in non POC, mm-hmm. comes from slavery mm-hmm. because kids had to be adults. They had to work. That they had true. to be grown up. They had to be strong and ready and willing to do this because we were literally ripped from our parents. Exactly. And. So I think a lot of that carries over. You know, it's been 400 years since slavery, which is not a long time. It's not. Uh, no, 200 years. Just kidding. That's not four. Wait, it, is my math right? It's been 200, 200 and over 250. Yeah, 250 yeah. years. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on. That's not right. 250 years since slavery ended, mm-hmm. which yeah. is even less time than 400 years. Mm-hmm. So you think about how much time it takes to like really remove that thinking from your mind and it's really systemic like it's really embedded in every system ever in the united states Mm -hmm. and worldwide and it's just it's seen everywhere and it makes me so upset because and i feel like i'm going off on a rant (laughs) that people can't see it people genuinely genuinely are like no that's not a thing it's just you guys just complaining too much it's like no whenever a 13 year old boy with a toy gun get shot get shot and killed because police officers were afraid of him mm-hmm. did you hear about the news report of the the little girl who stole it all mm-hmm. she's a four year old girl and um the police held her her father and her mother and her other siblings at yeah point. i saw that which the term stole mm-hmm. is loose for me for mm-hmm. a child of that age Cause literally, I was at the mall with my niece today. She's two. Yeah. We were in the candy store. She saw this big sucker that she wanted, and I mm-hmm. told her she couldn't have it because she had already had a bunch of candy. Yeah. I'm like, no, you can't have that. She's like, fuck, I can't. My mom is sitting in the hall, and she picks <laughs> it up, and she's about to run out the store. Yeah. And the guy working there is like, hey, is she with you? And I was like, oh my god, like. Yeah, they don't. We don't. Kids they don't, don't have get that. It. They, my niece, they don't have that. I feel like every single one of my nieces has walked out of a store with something, and you don't even realize that they have it. Yeah. So. The term stole is loose for a child. Very loose. Already. And then the fact that they came in with fucking police officers. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Fucking yeah. ridiculous. Or I read a read in this report where um, this guy, it's not funny. It's just, it's just sad that it keeps happening so much and there's nothing being done about it. Um... This lady was at uh, a drugstore. I think it was either like CVS or Walgreens or some kind of store. Mm -hmm. And um, the clerk suspected her of stealing. Of course. Okay. Instead of calling the police, he calls his friend. Oh. Yes. I've not heard this. 
and his friend shoots her in the head. She wasn't still in. She was just shopping while black. Yeah. My face, which is sad for two reasons, shouldn't be as shocked as it is. Mm Mm-hmm. But also should be because that shouldn't be so normal that I shouldn't be shocked. Not at all. Not That's at all. That's fucked up. I had not heard that. Yes. Wow. Um, we're getting back on the subject. Back to a- the topic because we <laughs> went off on a whole tangent. We did. We did. ADD moment. We mm-hmm. really back in. But another um, trait of a toxic relationship is respecting boundaries. Not respecting boundaries. Not respecting the boundaries mm-hmm. that you place um, and I think there's just there's common boundaries that people should know about, uh-huh. and I think people like often like to test boundaries or like you know test where they are in a relationship or test where they are in a friendship. Yeah. And I I believe that there should be set boundaries because common sense isn't so common. Right. And I think it's a conversation that needs to be had, um, whether it's with your your mother um, being like, look, you know, mom, I'm an adult now. And X, Y, Z needs to right. not happen. These are my boundaries. These are the boundaries uh-huh, that I'm uh-huh. setting, and you need to respect that. And if you're in a friendship and you're like, "Hey, you know, you're my friend. We've been friends for X, Y, Z years," but these are my boundaries that I'm setting for you. This you is, need to respect, yeah, my boundaries, and it needs to be reciprocated. Yep. Yeah. You, you also should, have to respect boundaries. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, do you think there should be like, how do you think that conversation should go? I I think it should be I don't think it ever needs to be like a whole hey these are my boundaries I think that is a thing for a relationship right I think you do really need to sit down and be like hey these are things that I'm not okay with at this phase of our relationship like don't come in the bathroom and poop while I'm showering I don't like that Mm -hmm. that's a hard boundary for me my entire relationship Mm -hmm. no do not poop in the bathroom with me but (laughs) But I feel like. But I get it. You don't want to be cleaning your body and you smell the fumes of you know just. Because it's hot in the shower and then the hot thing mixed together. Hot ass. Ugh. Mm, hot shit. Hot shit, but not in a good way. Mm. But I feel like with friendships, I think it's one of those things that kind of naturally comes up, and you should be comfortable enough with your friend mm-hmm. to be like, "Hey, that's a boundary for me. Like that's that's something that I'm not okay with, or I don't want you to say this particular thing, or." don't treat me this particular way or whatever like i think that's something that naturally should just happen mm-hmm. for friends and in relationships but specifically for friends yeah and i think um also rule consent in a friendship and yes. people talk about consent they always think about sexual consent and it also it, it covers it's, it's it's a blanket term um mm-hmm. That we need to kind of unlearn to just to unlearn being just associated with sex. Mm-hmm. Consent is also respecting the boundary of your friend being like, "Hey, you know, I'm at the point where I'm at my my alcohol consumption limit, and I can't go on like this." Yep. And respecting that, or being like, "Hey, you know, I've just this is my house. Don't yes, do this I need you to thing. leave. Yeah, yeah." I'm ready to go. I'm not even ready to go to bed. I just ready for you to go. Exactly. Mm-hmm. My social battery has run out. I need you to leave. I need you to leave. Or, on the flip side, I am enjoying being in your presence, but I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just... And that kind of ties back into respecting boundaries and everything. And the friend zone. That's on my list. I zone. have said this to several of my straight male friends who are usually the people who... Bring up the friend zone. Mm-hmm. The friend zone does not exist. Why do you think it doesn't exist? I think the friend zone is a thing that straight men, I'm gonna be honest, mm-hmm. came up with to as a reason and a tool as to why they got denied by a woman. I feel like if you hit on somebody that you're already friends with, mm-hmm. and they say they're not interested in you, they're your friend. You've always been their friend. You didn't get friend zoned. You are their friend okay like do you do you believe that they there is such thing as platonic relationships between the female and male or gender fluid or however you want to absolutely my best friend is female okay like my best friend in the entire world is a woman and we've been friends for 10 years and i neither of us have ever once been near or wanted to be near each other's genitals <laughs> like 
I think that's another really toxic trait Mm -hmm. that we need to unlearn as human beings because it puts the whole sexualization of relationships on in a in a heteronormative way. Mm -hmm. And fuck that noise. How do you think that you have been? I feel like I'm interviewing you right now. I feel like I'm being interviewed too. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Well, being you know being in touch of you know a female male. Heteronormative, quote unquote, uh-huh. uh, friendship, friendship, friendship for so long. How do you think that you ha- you guys have been able to keep that understanding? I think I, and this is not even to be like campy or funny or to try and like tie back into the episode, but boundaries. Mm-hmm. We under like my best friend is one of those people who's like, when you when she ready for you to leave, she ready for you to leave. Bye. She's like, all right, you gotta go. She's and very I'm like, matter of fact. Very matter of fact. And mm-hmm. I'm the same way. Like, I'm like, all right, I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Exactly. Or I'm ready for... Like, we understand each other's switches, our ons, our offs, our boundaries, and we respect them. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll not hear from her for a week, and I'm like, hey, what's up? Are you ignoring me, or are you just depressed? And she's like, I'm depressed, or mm-hmm. I've been real busy all week, or whatever. And like, not that I ever think she's ignoring me. Sometimes she might be. You never mm-hmm. know. But if she is, shit, I'd be ignoring her ass, too. <laughs> I ignore all my friends at some point. That's just who I am. The plot thicken. <laughs> but the plot thicken. So that's why you did not just get it. <laughs> but no, that's uh, that, and but, that kind of that kind of segue. Yeah, yeah, that kind of segues into um, what I wanted to talk about next. Is, but wait, hold on. I want okay, your okay. opinion of the friend zone. See, I didn't think about it the way that you presented it. Um, Nobody does. No, yeah. I'm real objective on that whole idea of the friend zone. Yeah. Um, I think it is a thing. Yeah. Um, but with the new information that you get, you've given me, I kind of want to do a little bit more research and get back to you on that one. Okay, that's all right. Because um, I'm all about, you know, having a stance. And it's not that I'm flip floppy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this is something that's a lot of people lack is... Having an opinion, but it being okay to change it based on new information that you have. Mm-hmm. Your opinions you can, are allowed to change. That's why they're opinions. Yeah, but the friend zone, I think it is. It, it, it is um, a thing. Uh, I had to walk people right, you know, right back down to their friend zone seat plenty of times. <laughs> um, <laughs> why you why you gonna laugh so messy? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's only that laugh is only messy enough to be equivalent to what you just said. I wasn't. Oh. I wasn't even being messy. I was just being for real, for real. I have. <laughs> see, I wasn't even thinking about that. Escorted a few people. I have had to back to their seat people. in the stands. Yes. Wow, <laughs> in the stands, bitch. Okay. <laughs> so I have a stadium worth the friend zone people, of course. <laughs> But no, I don't think it's a thing. Um, even like, and this kind of, oh, this is kind of. I like the way this is flowing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, I think about a friend zone is, oh, I want to say it's a punishment. Um, That's a rough term. No, but I think I've kind of used it as such. And I kind of think okay. it, I kind of, <laughs> no, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I know what it sounded like. But I have, so, okay, I, I separate the friend zone from actually my friend group. Okay, fair. I get that. And it's not that I'm taking people out of the friend zone and putting them back in. Once you in that bitch, you in that bitch. You're not coming out. You're not coming out. (laughs) You're stuck in the stands. And you might have not started in the friend zone, but you very sure can end up in that bitch. (laughs) A lot. (laughs) Okay. So you have presented me with new information. Yes. And, okay. Fair. It it, it might have been, you know, someone I dated or was interested in romantically and it just didn't work out. And I'm like, hey. No, thank you anymore. No, gracias. You're in. Let's be friends. You're in row C, seat 12. (laughs) There are no floor seats to the friend zone. No floor seats to the friend zone. Not at all. Mm -mm. Um, But we were segueing. Yes. 
Which I got distracted just now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, um, yeah, I've I've used the friend zone for exes. Um, oh. I've used uh, just people like I have generally met people genuinely met people that I just wanted to be friends with, and mm-hmm. I put them in the friend category in my mind mm-hmm. um, to let you know how my mind works how I come you know whatever put things in categories right. um, and they have been like you know this, so I'm like okay your friend whatever blah 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 mm-hmm. and then they're like oh no like I'm kind of feeling you and I'm like hey let me back you, walk you back Mm-mm. to section D you can't. row H C14 no nah, no ma'am yes so that's how I kind of look at the friend zone. Um, oh, that's, that's that's our shenanigan question of the week. Okay, I how, live. What is your view on the friend zone? Yes. Do you think it is a place of purgatory? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's where dead babies go? Or yes. do you think... <laughs> It's a home for actual friends. They go Darius with the snacks. It's Darius with the snacks. With the snacks. I always had snacks when I was in high school. Is that enough? That's good. Again, I'm eating, as the black people say, strawberries. Strawberries. This time we have the Sours Unwrapped Minis. I like these better than the ones we had last week. These is far. These need to make a reappearance. Mm, they will. They'll mm. be back. Um... So, I don't know what you were going to segue to. Do you remember what you were going to segue to? I totally forgot. Well, I would like to talk about mutual friends. Go ahead. I think that's a fair segue. Um, so, I think it was the first episode that we were talking about the phrase we, we or you coined mm-hmm. called Step Friend. Oh, yeah. The first episode. Mm-hmm. So, here is kind of a dual friend zone, step friend question. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about step friends who are male as a, when it comes to like male, female, platonic relationships? See, that's why I'm kind of different um, because I feel like 80% of my male friends are on the queer spectrum. T. Yes. So I've never really run into that issue. Wow. But the ones that you know were uh, step friends <laughs> that kind of uh, you know kind of show interest, I had to walk their ass back to section D, uh, row H in C eighteen. Mm. Yeah. Leave ass um. Back. Then I kind of kind of flip the question. How do you feel about step friends stepping more into the friend? I think it's great. I think I've never been one to keep many friends, mm-hmm. but I do think that somebody that you meet that is a mutual friend, a step friend, and y'all get along, mm-hmm. and it gets to a point where it's not just you know, oh that's so and so's friend, where you can be like, oh that's my friend, right? I think that's great. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. I think any kind of growth and love is great. Okay. Mutual friendships and arguments are falling out. Who? Okay, so I could go on a whole rant about this. I um, am very good at cutting people off and mm-hmm. letting people go. Um, if I don't want to be friends with you anymore, you piss me off, I'm done with you. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. I don't like toxic people in my life. It's the whole point of this episode. Yeah. Detox tea. Detox tea. Um, and I think if you if you and a friend get into it, y'all fall out and y'all have a mutual friend, mm-hmm. I don't think it should be on that mutual friend to try and play the field between the two of you. I think they should be able to live their life. Mm-hmm. If they want to be friends with the other person, be friends with the other person. If you want to be friends with me, be friends with me. You didn't have a falling out. Yeah. However, if it's some real fucked up shit that the other person did, mm-hmm. and you 
can't see the mutual friend can't see the fault in that then I'll be a little bit like okay I'm about to cut your ass off too but then it's just like as a mutual friend in a situation where there was a falling out I've dealt with this so many times in my life Mm -hmm. Uh, without going into it um, too much this is a little, you know, surface tea. Okay. Um, there was a situation between two of my female friends and uh, a male. Mm. And me and a friend fell out mm. over it. I didn't have a relationship with this man, but our mutual friend did. Mm. And um, it they fell out and it caused me and my other friend to fall out because which you know you feel betrayed on both ends and we were young we were younger we were probably uh, you know just out of high school mm. but it to me I always felt like if there is a conflict with friends that are mutual um, the best thing to do is stay neutral the best way uh-huh. the best way you can um, you can let them vent to you um but talking shit to p- appease the one and then going to the other one and listening to the event and talking shit to appease them, that's mm-hmm. where you cross the line. I personally have been in that situation. Yeah. And then I think if you feel like it's an issue, don't allow them to vent to you about the, the situation. Mm-hmm. Be like, uh, my name Bennett, I'm motherfucking in it. See, I feel like that's the best stance to be on. Yeah, because it just eliminates the whole, you know, well, I'm coming to you and I just want to say this and you be like, well, I know in the back of my head that such and such, that just, Mm-mm. it's foolproof. Yeah. Just shut the fuck up, bitch. If you want to talk about it, y'all talk to about talk about it together. Exactly. So. Moving along. Okay. Um... Kind of let's keep on the same thing. How do you feel about parents falling out or not having or not liking your significant other or friends not liking your significant other? Because oh. I've dealt with both issues before on several occasions. I have never dealt with a significant uh, friend not liking a significant other or a significant other not liking a friend. Oh, you're so lucky. Um, but I haven't had many significant others. I've been a very single person because whatever mm-hmm. um nor have I dealt with a parent not liking my significant other but I have I ever been the friend that didn't like somebody's significant other I feel like I have I feel like yes I have um but at the end of the day at the end of the day, it's up to that person to decide to decide to them to decide whether that person is toxic or not. Mm-hmm. Um, I cannot like somebody all day, or somebody cannot like my significant other all day. But if I am okay with what's happening with them, then I am. And I think that's where it has to. You have to again. <laughs> Place boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, and I, and it's hard. It's hard. It puts a strain on things. I've I've been in a relationship. I haven't had the issue with um, my my parent not liking the significant other, but I have had the issue with friends not liking the significant other, mm-hmm. whether it be for superficial reasons or um, for you know just you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but. The best thing I, I mean, the only thing I knew what to do was to keep them apart. Yeah. Um, That's like rule number one. And it sucks because you're like, okay, this is my friend. I want to do, you know, I want to hang out with my friend. And if we're, you know, we're having a kickback or we're having an out, and then I want my significant other there too. And it's just like, to keep them from button heads. You mm-hmm. just have to. You have to keep them separate. You have to protect your peace. Mm. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. Loving yourself both in and out of relationships. Yes. Self-love. Um. Self-love. I think we were talking about that when you were talking about um, ignoring your friend. Mm-hmm. And I think people... And I have been... Um, I've had that problem before being in a relationship and putting 100% of myself into a relationship, giving my all into a relationship and not really realizing that a lot of it wasn't being reciprocated. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the 
my boundaries weren't being respected. Um, you know, my efforts weren't being reciprocated. And um, when the relationship end, ended, I think I talked about this in the, the first or second episode, mm-hmm. I felt lost because I wasn't giving myself enough self love while I was in that relationship. I wasn't also catering to my needs. Mm-hmm while in a relationship and I felt drained. And that's another that's another um, flag of realizing your relationship is toxic. Um, it, it's how you feel. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to, you know, have your separate group of friends and have your separate outing. You can be yourself in a relationship and still respect the fact that you're in a relationship. Yeah. If you're in a monogamous, monogamous relationship and you like to, you know, um, go out with your friends and um, you like to go painting. It's okay to have things separate from your significant other. I mean, you're still. I think that's what keeps relationships healthy, honestly. Exactly. Like, Having... the, like Will and Jada. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a quote that he said. He was like, I'm not responsible for her happiness. Yeah, I'm not responsible for her happiness. Yeah. I forget what the rest of the quote was because there's more to it than that. It is. But it was something at first when I read it. I was like, that's fucked up. But then I, I got to thinking about it and I'm like. I'm gonna look it up. I mean, I kind of, I, I kind of disagree with it a little bit, but the gist of it, I get. Um, because I think some of the, the happiness within a relationship you're responsible for, but being happy overall as a person, as being yourself, as loving yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you just have to have that time, that time away from your significant other, that time to be able to to do what you want to do and still respect your relationship. And I think that ties a lot into um, understanding your personal needs Mm -hmm. and keeping your uh, mental health at the forefront of everything that you do. And I think it's it's a lot of growing awareness that I'm seeing, like um, from being on Twitter, and you know, just kind of like you know, observing the things Mm -hmm. people are talking about, and a lot of people are talking about healing themselves and making sure. That they love their self enough before they get into a relationship. Yes. And I think that's very important because a lot of people don't know their self. Especially, you know, like your, your late teens, your early 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like t- your 20s is a, is a period of your, t- of your life that you're really defining yourself. A lot of people p- uh, figure it out way sooner than others. But um, I think as a whole, it's a time for self-discovery. Yeah, I've I've always thought of my twenties and just as a, of twenties in general as their time to be selfish mm-hmm. and your time to you know if you don't want to do something don't do it if it doesn't make you happy don't do it mm-hmm. if you know if you excuse me want to be in a relationship fine do that if you don't want to be in a relationship and you want to sleep with everybody or nobody do do whatever the fuck you want to do protect yourself protect thyself yes. But live your best life if that's what you plan on doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I I can't imagine having been in a relationship in my early 20s. Oh, but now that I am technically in my late 20s. Technically. <laughs> technically. Bitch, you past 25. You're in your late. I am 26. <laughs> um, you are in your late 20s, though. <laughs> I mean, but le- le- like legitimately, now that mm-hmm. I'm in my mid to late 20s. Oh, I'm like. I'm like mid to it. I'm um I'm in my last year of my twenties and I'm holding on like pricks pumping the brakes. You got this. Thirty is gonna be it's gonna be lit. A bomb ass year. Yeah. Everybody says that thirty is the year. For most people. Uh-huh. Um but like it just I agree with what you were saying on, you know, your twenties is the time to be spent discovering yourself and learning new things and traveling the fucking world if that's what you want to yeah. do. Yeah. And I think self discovery is really important before you place a lot, because a lot of people think of relationship is filling a hole within yourself, mm-hmm. and I disagree with that. I think finding someone um, that's your kindred spirit, that you know, like people say, your better half, is an addition mm-hmm. to finding yourself. It should build on top. It's of. a yes. It's not. Oh, this is a hole that's missing, and I'm going to fill it with you. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people need to sit down, especially like young men. I've seen a lot of, and I, oh Jesus, I've experienced um, in the past. Um, I remember an ex told me, you know, I, I want to be, I'm not done being a hoe, 
but you know once we are at a certain age if we're still single then you know i want i still i still want you around but i want to i want to you know hoe around but i want you to sit right here in this corner for me i want you away from me basically and that's not yeah that's not fair that that's, is a toxic thing to ask somebody that is a toxic thing to ask somebody if you're not ready for me, then you're never gonna be ready for yes. me. Yes, like, and I think you just have to you have to make sure that you're ready for each other. Mm-hmm. It has to be a mutual thing. If if you if you're not ready to be to give your 100 percent in a relationship and to give your all to somebody, leave people to fuck alone. Let me live. <laughs> That's how you get into that never ending cycle of anxiousness. Mm-hmm. You have this man or woman who's not ready to be in a relationship, not ready to commit, and they're dragging this person along emotionally, abusing this person, uh, and just like being an ain't shit person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Overall, I think. Oh, were you gonna say something else? Yeah. Go ahead. And ahead. expecting this person to stand by you, expecting this person to go through the mud and. Uh, you know, just beating, beating, beating at this at this lump of coal to be a diamond for you, and it's that's not the way you do it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's teamwork. Yeah, it it's all about growing together when it comes to a romantic relationship mm-hmm. and and learning each other and learning a lot about yourself in the process. Um, but it should never be I'm gonna build you up only and you don't build me up or no. I'm going to use you to fill all of my holes mm-hmm. and good luck with your shit exactly <laughs> good luck with your baggage <laughs> fill all the holes baby. fill all those holes oh my um, God. but I think this conversation we're having right now segues quite p- nicely into the difference between being in a relationship and quote seeing someone because I feel like a lot of the time People will be like, oh, yeah, I'm seeing this person, but it's not official. Or, yeah, we're dating, but we're not together. I think dating is a term that, oh, it's very, it's it's too open. It's an open-ended statement. Mm -hmm. Because some people think that dating is an exclusive thing. Some people think that dating is, oh, you know, we're trying to see where it's going with us, but I'm still weighing my options. Yeah. And that is, uh, that's where you have to have, sit down and have a conversation. Yeah, that's where you have to have that conversation. Yeah. I'm trying to bring back the word courting. Courting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm courting this person. We are yeah. in the process of dating. Yeah. But we ain't there yet. But what is dating? Dating, for me, is... We are exclusive. We are together. We are dating. Mm -hmm. We are in a relationship. We are committed to one another. Or, Mm -hmm. if we are polyamorous, we are committed to one another and whoever else. Okay. But... Look at you. It's all about inclusion. Oh, it's all about inclusivity at Urban Proper. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But... I... Like, I was seeing a guy last year in, like... February. Poor guy. He was so cute. But, like, we were seeing each other, but we weren't quite dating. You know what I mean? Like, I always almost say, yeah, I dated this guy, but I didn't date him. Uh, uh-huh. we, we went on, like, four dates, and that's it. So, what, is five dates considered dating? No, dating is we sat down and had the conversation of, so, is this, like, a thing? Like, are we together? Like, should I delete my Tinder app, or... Like is this gonna be once or hell? <laughs> is this gonna be once or hell? Like, what's the tea? Yeah. Because when I was seeing him, I was still on Tinder. But oh, definitely, I may or may not have been on a date with him texting somebody else. Like ho ho, a she ho, ho 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 ho. Oh my um, God. But now that I am with my boyfriend that I've been with for fucking almost a year now, I haven't been on Tinder since we... Has it almost been, been almost a year? Yeah. Time just keeps rolling. It just keeps rolling into right the, the future. Fuck out. Um, I deleted Tinder once we said that we were dating. I remember the phone call. No, I remember the text message. Oh, yeah. You text- tried to text me <laughs> about being in a relationship. You tried it, ho. You tried it, but I'm gonna move around. I ain't gonna put your business all the way out there. 
motherfucking tried it. Uh, that wasn't a conversation for text. I thought it was, no, bitch. No. <laughs> Hell no. Why are we on the subject of, of dating and seeing each other? Uh-huh. I was talking about this term of predates. Disgusting. I hate it. We just talked about this for the first time the other day, and I want to vomit. Like, I'm on Twitter minding my goddamn business. <laughs> And I'm just like la la la, and I see this term predates from what I'm. And you saw it more than once. Oh, it was a whole thread. So one of my followers, um, our one of our followers on Twitter was talking about predates and um, talking about yeah, I really like this girl, but I'm going to predate with her to see where her head is. And I'm like predates. So you know, I hit the retweet button. Predate, sir. Coach put me on. That's my, my, my new term I like to say. Put me on, coach. <laughs> Give me the tea. You know, because everybody, everybody don't like, you know, you know, with the hyper masculinity thing. Mm. The tea. Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm a man. Put me on, coach. I'm trying to, you know, include everybody. Okay, all right. We love it. Yeah, so I'm like, put me on, coach. She's like, yeah, predate, you know, when you you guys sit down, you, you, you go on a date, quote unquote, where you don't spend money to try to see. If this person is worthy of going on a date, so, so you go on a date to see if you can go on a date. But no money is involved. He was very adamant. No money is involved. I love how niggas are so mad at spending money on dates. Like, bruh. But my thing is, it's like, okay, you don't have I, to spend a million dollars on a date. You don't. But the dating world has changed with you know the. Convergence of of media and Tinder and POF and all the dating e harmonies and uh, sliding the DM trying to see him this PM and you know all that. So traditionally, you know, you see somebody, you, you exchange numbers, you try to see if this can go somewhere. Uh huh. That's me. To me, that should be where the pre date. That is the pre date. Preliminary hearing <laughs> should be happening. If we if if I have given you my number, you have received access to more information to me. hmm If I say I want to go on a date with you, I'm not trying to pre date? Are you fucking kidding me? I think it's childish. I think it yes. I think it's like, what's the point of exchanging numbers? Even if you're, you know, exchanging, you know, messages over Tinder, I think that should be the point where you're trying to figure out is this person someone that I see myself being compatible with? Is this a person that I can date? And I and I get sometimes texting. Um, a lot of people are not good at texting. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are good at having. You know, in person conversations because of the internet, a lot of people have built up these personas of themselves, and mm-hmm. when you see them in person, they're not the same. But I think, you know, talking and communicating should be that process. So, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna pose this question on, on Facebook okay, pre dating, should this be a thing or not? Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I listen, if you contact somebody, y'all talking over Tinder or mm-hmm. in Instagram DMs or what the fuck you if you hit somebody up in, on Instagram, you literally know their life. Like everybody shares their whole not everybody, but most people share their whole entire life on fucking Instagram. If you scroll down my Instagram feed, you know everything I'm doing. Like You, you probably know, know not on mine. I mean, but not <laughs> not everything, but you know, right. when I'm a musician, you know that I'm a performer, I'm an actor, I'm an artist. Like, you know all of the necessary things that people need to know before they try to date me. And yeah. then, if you slide in my DMs and you try to ask me for my number and I give you my number... Y'all should be having conversations. We should be talking on the phone. We mm-hmm. should be texting back and forth. FaceTime is whatever y'all Android people have. Okay, first of all... <laughs> um... Uh, um but you know, like if if I have given you, <laughs> as Johan the scammer would say, give me entry to the house, give, give me, me access, access to, to the, the bitch. bitch. <laughs> if I have given you access to the bitch, 
you can take me on a date or yeah. I can take you on a date like yeah and that and oh that's the issue of um gender bias mm. I already know you who should pay that should be a conversation um I'll answer this question real quick okay, I think right. the person who asked for the date should pay okay so if I ask you on a date I'm gonna pay okay quick rant she should rant my young black African American whatever term you <sighs> prefer hopping into DMs and saying I want to get to know you okay don't follow it up with some stale ass what you doing all the time not even up uh... And not even spelling it out, just W-Y-D. W-Y-D. Talk about some, I want to see you, but not coming up with a fucking game plan. Nails on the chalkboard. Bring them on down. Homie, that will get you Blocked. nowhere. Blocked. That That's will get you. Is. <laughs> She's his version of friend zone. Walked back to seat seventy four, <laughs> row H, section one ten. Yes, mm-hmm. in rent. I agree with you wholeheartedly, and that's what ended whatever was happening with oh boy that was talking to last year. Mm. It's so hard to try and date somebody. Who doesn't have an opinion? (laughs) Oh my god, yes. Oh I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to say it like that. There's one thing to be easy going, but then there's another thing to not have an opinion. Because it's it's always I wanna do something that both of us like. Mm -hmm. Like I wanna go to a museum and like point out my favorite works of art for you. Like literally is what I said, let's go on a date and I'll point out my favorite works of art. And it didn't really work out that way. And I still had a good time. Mm-hmm. But also, if you didn't want to come to a museum, you shouldn't have come to a museum. Because mm. I want to spend hours here. Sounds like, like a pre-date. Nah, that's a real life date. Because we're going to get to know each other. And I might just spend a little money on you. At the museum? Yeah. Okay. They got a cafe. You can sit down and have lunch. Okay. Listen, I know how to go on a date. I ain't right, been in a relationship for almost a year for no reason. All right, Mr. Doris. I fucked up. Anyway, um, but no, yeah, predates, cancel that shit, end it right now. I don't know why the fuck people are so scared to spend money on somebody. Like, I get that I'll, sometimes women are asked for a bit much on the first date. Sometimes. Not all the times. Sometimes. And I understand that sometimes men don't give enough. Predates. Don't ask a woman to sit in a car in a parking lot somewhere. That's not a date. Oh, man. I, okay. I had a friend call me yesterday. Lord. And uh, our friend made a Facebook status about, you know, uh, being a single person and only like the same people. But we only that there. Mm. So this opened the fun games apparently to her DMs. And my friend's gonna remain, you know, I mean remain. I can't talk today. Anonymous, mm-hmm. but I'm using your story friend, so whatever. Um so this guy hops in her DMs, is like, hey, you know, I wanna get to know you. Um, let's meet up. And she's like, okay, cool. Babe, what you wanna do? He like, let's go to the park. All right, cool. She like, I'm at the gym right now, and it's like seven o'clock. And by the time I get done, the sun's gonna be starting to go down. So not gonna go to a park with you at nighttime. No. So he kind of pressed the issue a little bit, but the, the park doesn't close until ten. Listen, my That's nigga, great. my nigga, my nigga. They need some more claps. And that's another thing. Stop being fucking creepy. Yeah. 
If a woman doesn't want to walk around the park with you after the sun has gone down, if anybody doesn't want to walk around in the park with you after the sun's gone down, you good. You not respecting my boundaries. If I let you know that I'm uncomfortable with a situation, you should fucking stop. And you can't. Let me repeat. You can not get mad at somebody for not wanting to be in what is an uncomfortable situation for them because you're a nice person. And people, your toxic detector or radar should be going off at this point. You're not respecting my boundaries. Mm-hmm, that's one. You're putting me in an uncomfortable situation. That's two. And you're not taking my no for an answer. That's three. You struck right the fuck out. Out, motherfucking out. Bounce with it. Gone, gone. You outside the stadium now. You don't even get a seat no more. You no. gotta watch on the big screen at Bob Park Village across the street. Um. So, I feel like I'm I'm asking a lot of a lot of questions this week, but um. I kind of want to send some some traffic to Instagram. Yeah, let's do it. Let's have a let's have a debate on Instagram. Go to our Instagram page at Urban Proper Podcast, mm-hmm. and um, let's talk about how you have gotten out of a toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. Let's have that conversation. Okay. Meet me on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter is at Urban Underscore Proper. <laughs> there you go. Let's let's have a debate. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about not a debate. Let's just let's have a conversation on how you were able to pull yourself out of the toxic relationship, mm-hmm. whether it's uh, a family member, whether it was a friendship, um, whether it was romantic. I think I said the hit. But let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Yeah, let's talk about it. I feel like y'all feel like I'm gonna bite y'all or um, cut y'all out. Which. If you get crazy, you might get cussed out, but don't get crazy. Yeah. Plain and simple. A mess. <laughs> An actual mess. <laughs> All right. Now that we've kind of gotten through toxicity and cutting toxic people out, I think we're going to get down with a little bit of once or hellas. Once or hellas. Um, so she shouldn't. Um, a date in which the person uh, would like to go skiing once or hell is. I try it once. <laughs> it depends. Oh. See, I don't know how I'm gonna get down with the skin. I don't like being cold Mm -hmm. so I might try to suggest something else but you know I'm all for experiences we love a good experience so I'll say once okay what about you dear uh I'm gonna go once once I'm gonna go once I wanna say hellas but I feel like me being the person that I am I ain't gonna like it I agree with you. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna bust my ass. Not even that. I feel like I actually would be pretty good at it, but I'm like, yeah, I'm good at this. I'm good. I don't know. It needs to be I just feel like it's just too much. It's a lot of work. Yeah. From what I understand. Mm-mm. I'm not gonna keep it a booty and the thighs type, but mm-mm. no, ma'am. Not today. I just know. <laughs> okay, moving along. Moving okay. along. Okay. Um. Talking about dates, right? Mm-hmm. So, a haunted house. Would you consider that a date? Yeah. Okay, would you do that once a hell is? Hell is. Okay, you like being scared. I mean, not necessarily, but it is kind of like uh, it is kind of like a great way to judge how fun somebody is. Honestly, if somebody mm-hmm. invites me on a date to a haunted house, I'm already attracted to you. Because that's not a typical Too bad game. you already off the market. I'll be, I'll be trying to, you know, put you well, on the game. Well, when my uh, boyfriend, before we really were dating, dating, he was working at a haunted house. So, Ooh. there's Child the team. To the that's the team. I feel like I talked about him on every single episode. There's going to be one where I don't eventually. And you're going to be pissed off. <laughs> uh-uh, 
Uh, Why you ain't talking about me? Episode seventeen. Or <laughs> <laughs> sixteen <laughs> up until now, you don't mention me in some way. Um, so what about you, Sheets? I've gone on a uh, date to the haunted house a couple of really? times. Really? I think it's really yeah. fun. I like to see people's fight or flight response. Yes. Um, and then too, like you know. In a heterosexual relationship, you know, keeping with the whole gender norms, quote unquote thing. I want to see if you gonna protect me or you gonna fucking run. I'm gonna tell you right now, if a clown come, you fighting for your own shit. Damn, there is. You fighting for yourself. It be your own nigga. <laughs> It'll be this nigga right here. Nope. <laughs> nah, I'm good, sis. No, no, I think it's it's fun. Um, here's one for you that might throw you off a little bit. Okay. Um. A straight man would like to take you to a drag show. Once or hellas. And how would you feel about that? Seeing that I have freed my mind. Free your mind and the cooch will follow. But <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> there was a slight delay. On my audio part of my brain, computing that and understanding what the hell you just said. <laughs> Taking me all the way out. <sighs> um, there has been an instance, um, hmm, how would I feel about that? Now, if you ask 21 year old Shalisha this, she would have a different response. Um, but I wouldn't have a problem with it. Hmm. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. I like that. I mean, I might ask questions. I'm always going to ask questions. All right. My first question would be, are you in the drag show? Yeah. <laughs> are you... Ooh. What if they were that, in the That's show? the thing. Mm. We should have had that because I shouldn't have to get questions. Ooh. We really should have. We got to keep that for another Yeah, day. we're going to have a hold on to that. Oof. I don't know how I feel. I'll be shocked. Really? I would be. But he's like, all right, hold on, I'll be right back. And then you go, he like gone for the whole number and then comes back. And he's like, what do you think? Come back in the drain? <laughs> in heels with titties and pads tucked for the gods. I ain't gonna lie, I would have to pick my fucking chin up off the floor. Mm hmm. Yeah. Fair. That's fair. I'm trying to see can I can I sit through that once or should I sit mm, I can only do that once this is a shock factor you can't do that over and over again that shock factor is going to hit you once yeah it's going to hit you once and then you're going to be like I can't uh, I cannot yeah Opulence. <laughs> come on girl um hmm A strip club for a date. For a date? Hey, you said a fucking drag show. That's different than a strip club. Hell, that you all throwing dollars at a drag show and like you, you doing. are, and there may be costume changes, but it ain't bitches walking around with the titties out or men's walking around with their dicks out. Oh, that's a whole different scenario. I don't know if I can ever step into a male strip club ever again. I have never been to a strip club ever. What? And I want to experience both, but I actually also don't care to. I've, I've been to a male strip club. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that story. Oh, please. We had to say that for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, technically, I have been to a female strip club, technically, but that shit was whack. It was in New Orleans, and that shit was weird. So I don't want to count it, but on a technicality, I have to. For all intents and purposes. But I think you know. On a date, I don't know. I. It don't I have to be a first. Are we talking about first dates? First or? dates. Oh, first dates. First dates. I think the strip club would be fun. I. I think it would be fun. If a woman wants to go. To a male strip club with me on a first date, I'd be like, "Wow, why?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know the understanding is that I right. do enjoy penis for on occasion, but why? 
I would be I would be less offended and more confused. I can see where the confusion lies, but I also see like where you guys can have fun. I think it would be great. Like we could talk about what I, I, I what? Why? No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> you was trying to accept it. You were really trying to accept it. And then you were like, Shisha, I cannot get with you on this. What the fuck are you talking about? I tried to rationalize it in my head and it just does not work. I don't uh, I saw get the it. whole thought. I saw this whole process. Like, your, your facial expression. No. I, know, I think it'll be fun. You know, it's just like, I mean, y'all adults. I'm not saying go to the strip club and have a lap dance. Or, you know... Whatever. But, but, like, what are we going to... Hell, I don't know. I just threw it out there and shit. I'm, I appreciate you for just throwing it out there because now I'm thinking about my life. Um, I'm going to see Strip Club first. Oh. I'm going to go once. Mm-hmm. Really, I want to say nah. Because why are you asking me to go to a strip club with you? I don't understand. Man or woman. Like, I just don't get it. I don't know. I think it, it will it will break a lot of uh, a lot of ice shelves, whatever. It'll be a lot of ice broken already. Hell right? yeah! Ugh. I just gotta chill. Why? I don't know. Booty shaking. Booty shaking. But Nibble then, like, what if, it's, what if it's amateur night? I'm gonna want to get up there. Okay, that's gonna what's gonna make it fun to break the ice? Get your ass up there. Strip. Then I'm gonna be getting laid on the first day because they're gonna be like, God damn. I mean, I'm not opposed to sex on the first date, but mm. let's just say. I mean, if it's amateur night and you comfortable and you had a few shots or, you know, you done drink a couple glasses of wine or what have you, and you want to get up there and shake your groove thing and have fun with your date, by all means. See, I think that actually could be kind of fun. Like going on amateur night See, and like both of y'all get up there and do it It's together. an off color thing to do, but I think it's. But if you ask me to go to a strip club, I'm gonna be disgusted. And I'm gonna judge you. Let's go to a strip club after this. Let's go. You cool with it? Yeah, because you're my friend. I know. But I'm still grossed out. Why? I, strip clubs are so gross to me. And not for the fact that there's people walking around naked or none of that Mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm gonna walk into a strip club and it's gonna feel like I walked into sweat and I don't know how I feel about that I thought you like sweaty men I do sweatiness I do but not sweaty women no I'm not I'm talking about male or female oh I don't like walking into it I like to be part of the creation of it so you into a cloud of just juices yeah juices and fluids and sweat and pheromones and energies that I just am Legitimately, I'm tingling right now thinking about it. I don't think we can go to a strip club after this. He's <laughs> <laughs> freaking. Oh, it's hilarious. He's gonna cry if I keep on crying. I keep trying to rationalize it though. Like, I keep trying to be like, no, I can do it. He's like, your face is like really like, yeah, it's cool. And then it's like, error, 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 <laughs> error. Does like, not compute. Does not compute. So, yeah. We know there is this stance on strip clubs now. I have nothing against sex workers. I have nothing against women who are stripping, men who are stripping. Yeah. More power to you. You do what you got to do, sis. Get your money. Don't expect Darius to ever step into a strip club. I'm never. just afraid. Maybe not never. I'm but, like, I'm pretty sure we're going to go on a trip and we're going to want to go to a strip club and we're going to go. That's where I see it. That's why I was like, you know, we're going to go on a trip and we're going to go to a strip club. We're going to have a great ass time. It's going to be great. Yeah. I but can see you throwing some dollars. I definitely will want to make it rain. But with your with a potential boo, nah, you good on it. Okay. Uh-uh. All right. <laughs> um, that just fucked my whole life up. <laughs> he can't even fit function um. right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, while we're on the topic of unconventional dates, mm-hmm. um. Going out of the country on the first day. Hell to the no no no. Hell. But you were going to a strip club. No, I'm joking. <laughs> to the no no no. What if this is like a wealthy person? No. And they're like, Hell I have a private jet, and no. I want to take you, fly you to Peru. Uh, uh, that sounds like home. human trafficking. No. Facts as fuck. That sounds like human trafficking. <laughs> I'm not with it. My spider senses are tingling. Now you know how I feel. 
I'm mm-hmm. talking about going to a strip club and you talking about. <laughs> I feel like I just. You talking it. about a fucking the Taken movie? That's what you talking literally, about. Literally, <laughs> like, literally. Do you want to be in Taken or do you want to go to no? No, I would for not. a first date, no, no. I can't give you that much power. True. I can't. That's very true. Uh. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. No. Uh. No, maybe. We have to be known each other for a, for a minute, but no. But not on the first day. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. Go I don't today. care if you're trying to flew <laughs> me out. I'm sick. <laughs> no, I 100 percent agree with that. That does yeah. sound like some human trafficking shit. Yeah, like, and it might not be, know. but I'm just I wouldn't be comfortable with it. So that'd be a hell. So no, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't consider it at least. I would consider it. I'll be like, okay, B. If it um, if it was a person that I had been talking to for an extended period of time, yes, that's always a factor. Yeah, that's always. But a factor. if it's somebody I only know for a couple months and they're like, let me flew you out. Oh, mm-hmm. oh no. wait a minute. I ain't trying to get flued out and never come back. Mm-mm. I ain't never getting flued back. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just running all type of scenarios in my head. Hell, no. Nah. Mm-mm. No, Darius. Nah. I'm done. I can't. <laughs> I cannot compute. Me trying to go to a strip club. I'm here, <laughs> but why? <laughs> what are we doing? As much as I want you to go, I'm have to respect your friend boundary. I would go. I just would be so concerned the whole time. Like it would be one of those things where I would go. You would have no heart would... swipes in your fanny pack, wouldn't you? Uh huh. See. And your ways. And uh-huh. I'm not even agoraphobic. I would go, one hundred percent, one hundred percent would go, you don't see and I would sure. probably get there and be like, "This is a mistake." I'll sit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I know that situation all too well. You would literally like, not you in general, agree to a situation, and then you get there and be like, "Fuck!" God damn it! Why did I stay at home? I would legitimately get there and be like, no, ma'am. And y'all would be like, where did Darius go? He's like, texting me to see where I am, and I Ubered home. <laughs> I have to go home, guys. I'm sorry. I cannot Uber it. I don't give a damn. I'm Ubering home. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Lord have mercy. Oh, um, I think this episode has taken a turn. It did. So many turns. So many times. Do you think a stripper could like helicopter their titties like make a helicopter they did? As a person who is heavily chested, um Fair. I don't I don't think that would be a pleasurable thing to do to yourself. That would be like swinging your um your balls around. I mean, but you can helicopter your dick. I mean that's different. And the balls usually bounce with it. You look so defeated. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure that there is a thing. I just felt like it could be a cute little moment on stage. She's like holding the titty down. <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm trying to make up reasons for me to go to a strip club. That would be an interesting thing to see. I don't, I don't see. think that's a thing that, that, no, that kind of defies physics. Unless you have a long titty. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I'm saying that that is going to be possible is if you have long titties. And in that case, I would be like, you know, no body shaming. But I'll be like, should you be up here with them long ass titties? Somebody got a bad Hey, you're right. Long. Whatever floats your boat and don't think your mouth shit. Lords. Helicopter titties is Darius' thing. Helicopter. Butter and helicopter titties. Oh my god. Butter, uh. butter hands, and helicopter titties. Hey, at least my beef was marinated at a young age. Oh my god, he marbleized his beef. Okay, y'all. We gotta go. <laughs> Alright, thank you all so much for listening to this entire episode. Yes, and don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We are at 
Urban underscore proper on Twitter. Yes. At Urban Proper Podcast on both Facebook and Instagram. Yes. YouTube is Urban Proper Podcast. And is that it? Spotify. Oh, yeah. SoundCloud. Spotify, SoundCloud. Home. And Google Podcasts. We're yeah. everywhere. We, we want do. you guys to hear us. We want you to hear us. We want you to know who we are. So. Before but, we go. Yeah. Black Business Highlight. Yo, 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 yo. Shout out to Pretty Penny Collection Ooh. on Instagram. Hello. It is at Pretty Penny Collection. It is a woman streetwear clothing brand that just launched. So go follow her. Go give her some support. Give her a likey loo. Yes. Give her a clicky follow. Buy some shit. Yes. Uh, we would also like to shout out Catered by Curtis LLC. Ooh. It is a um, catering service provided by someone here locally in St. Louis that a mutual friend of ours knows. Yeah. Um, super great. You can find them on Facebook, Catered by Curtis LLC. I went and liked their page because I like food and we love a good and fresh food moment. Yes. So, again, if you have any black owned businesses that you know of that you want to shout out, if you are yourself a black owned business, an artist, um, a bad bitch, let us shout you out. Yes. And with that being said, we will actually end this episode now. See you guys later. Bye.